I recently did a video, Mastering Coffin Shape. Had such great reviews on it, so many excellent comments, and you asked if I could do it with almond. That's what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. So in that video, I was just taking a coffin shape from any client that might come into the salon with an already existing shape and turning it into coffin. Now making a nail shape from scratch is different. That'll be a separate video. But a lot of times a client will change the shape. So I've got a couple shapes here. I've got three. I've got one almond and two square. This one's a little bit more tapered, but essentially that's what it is. Often they'll come in with an almond and they'll want to go shorter almond. And that is like your own. Oh, how do I, you know, there's a tip. And then they might come from a square shape wanting to go almond. So I'm going to show you, walk you through that. Okay, so in that last video I showed you, I sort of drew a little sketch and that's what I'm going to do today. If you can find your center point on anything that you do, even if it's an almond that's already an almond, <laughs> it's a good idea to find your center point. With these shapes in particular, if you don't find your center point and you start shaving off one end or the side or the other, you can literally take away too much. And if you do, then it's all wonky. So finding that center point is crucially important because that's where the nail is going to go. And honestly, the longer the nail is, the more leeway of error you have. So it can actually be shorter, harder to perfect any shape shorter than it is any shape longer because in a shorter area, you have a shorter area to tell the story of what shape you want it to be. So I'm gonna start with these and I'm gonna show you, let's take the almond, for example. Here's an almond shape that's already shaped, okay? Some clients will come in with an almond that's grown out, let's say, three, four, five, six weeks, depending on their growth, and they wanna, I'm gonna go almond again, they'll say. So you wanna make it, almond. you think you can just, oh, just shorten the sides and you go, no, actually, I've done that where I will take the size and it's like, Ugh. and if you go too short, because in this nail world, everything is so big, but yet it's a small move makes a big change. So they might come in and say they want to go almond still, but they want to go shorter. You really do have to find that center point again. And when it's already almond, it's a little bit different. So we're going to find that center point and we are just going to draw that on here. I'm using a white gel. I love this nude color. Just as a side note, if you're interested, this is color number five, Beamy's new collection of nudes. Just loving the colors. So I got that on there and I'm going to nuke that because I want that to stay there while I'm filing. So with almond, you actually take off the tip first and go to the link that you want and let me show you that. So I get a good set of files. Um, now I do want to tell you a good set of files really is important because you're trying to file a lot of stuff off and the grit makes it different. These are a hundred grit, but you could use a 150 and a 180, but a 180 is a little soft. 180, yeah. 150 is a little grittier, but 100 would be, you're trying to take away a lot of product quickly. Okay. So I did find the center point. That's what you want to do. But what I'm going to do is ask the client. How much shorter do you want it to be? Now, it is a kind of a funny thing, and this you have to feel this out with your clients, but if you go shorter on a, let's say, if I'm going to shorter on a square, like I'm going to take that much off. They say, oh, I want to take this much off. But if you say you want to take that much off and then you go almond, it's going to look really tiny because you're taking away a lot of surface area. A lot of nail estate is gone when you change a square to an almond, even though it's the same length. Keep that in mind. So, when you go back to that almond, I've got a long almond and they want to be a shorter almond. So I'm going to take off the free edge and literally just get your good file and take off. So I will go little by little and then check with the client. Is that what you want? Is that how much you want off? And they might, you know, do this. And once you determine how long that they want it, you might want to tell them though, because it's going to look a little bit bigger now because we are taking off the tip. And of course, an almond is shaped like this. So every time you take it down, it's going to get bigger. So they want to know that it's going to look smaller when you do take it down. And then you take the sides down, it's going to look a lot smaller. <laughs> and you don't want to add, oh goodness, that's the worst thing. Okay, so go down a little bit more. Okay, and then the client says, that's good. 
So that's the length that they want it to be. You still got your center point on there, so the rule still applies. Now we have to take off the sides, okay? So now we've got the, the end. And when you're filing any shape, you can only take it from your free edge. Now the free edge is where the nail is now not stuck to your finger anymore. That's become free. It's now the edge that's free. <laughs> so the free edge is where your nail can't be altered anymore. That's actually where the side of your finger is. That free edge, where that ends, that's where your shape can begin. So this is where my free edge is, right about here. I can start altering it. And I want to go from here to there. Now I could draw a straight line. And that would give me more of a stiletto look, right? But I don't want a stiletto. I want an almond. Now an almond is basically a fat stiletto from there to there. It's more, you got a little curve on it, right? It kind of bows out a little bit, right? That's what I want to do. So again, to do the other side, my free edge is right here. And there's the tip of it. Now, if I did a straight line, that would be the stiletto, but I want a more curved line, more bowed out, okay? That's just a rough line, of course. So I'm gonna nuke it so we can file to that. I just wanna mention when you buy, thank you to everybody that's bought my files. When you buy my files, you're in, I include this card and it shows on this side in particular, what the file does for you, what, this, what the um, grit is all about, what it does for you with that grit, and then what it doesn't do. In other words, a file like this, you wanna use for taking down acrylic, and then I show that don't use it on natural nail. So I sort of give an idea of what you don't do with it. So you don't make the mistake, because you know, file looks like a file, right? But they're actually all quite different. Okay, so now that's cured. Now you wanna start filing it. Now you really wanna focus on not touching that tip because that is the length that the client wants it. When you touch that tip, you're gonna make it shorter. So we are filing to the tip, okay? So we're gonna take away this edge here. But we're never, never, never gonna file the tip because by doing so, we're gonna make it shorter and they won't want it shorter. Sometimes if I know a client well enough, I might know that this is too short. By the time she sees the sides tapered away, they might realize that that's not the length that they want. It's actually too short. So I will be very careful in how short I go because again, you don't really want to lengthen it. It would be a real pain. You can do it, of course, but it'd be a pain, much more time consuming. Okay, now when you do an almond shape, you want to keep that fat look. And then the other video I talk about, a muffin top look on the nail. And that still can apply to this, but we're talking about the silhouette. Sometimes you can hold it up to a light. And if it's giving you that silhouette that you're looking for, you're getting there. But I'm going to keep in that position and I'm going to file. But remember, don't file that edge because he might not want it that short. So be very careful. You want to go in and you want to go up to the point. Take it from the free edge. But try to keep that roundness. We're not going straight. We're trying to keep a roundness because it's an almond. Now I tend to do a bit of a pointy almond. That's my style. And I think if someone comes to me, they, they are coming to me for that style. They do like that. And you can do a fat almond. You can do a rounder almond. You can do a pointy almond. Just, you know, you'll develop your own style. But so now you can see if I hold that up to a silhouette light here, I can start to see that it's starting to shape up like an almond. Okay, now I have to match it on the opposite side. Now we're taking away that other side, doing exactly the same thing on the other side. But remember, don't touch that edge because you might not want it shorter. Make sure you pay attention to that. And do that round motion. Hold it up to that silhouette and see what you're getting. So it's kind of, you can see it right there. It's shaping up. Okay, now we want to kind of make it even. When you hold it up to that silhouette, you can start to see what that might be, okay? And sometimes I'll show it to my client and see what they say. They might say they want it a little bit shorter. They might say, oh, 
I kind of like that fat round look as opposed to maybe a pointy pointy. Maybe you'll develop a new style together. Sometimes clients don't care and they don't, don't pay attention until you're finished. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now I've got a shape that I think when I'm looking at it from the top down, like an aerial point of view, just this one angle, I'm shaping up to what I want. So when I look at it and I go, okay, so let's turn it sideways and ugh, look at that. Look at that big drop down. That's ugly. We got to get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to just file that underneath it like that. And I'm going to do that on the opposite side as well. But when I look at this nail down the barrel, I don't want to build it up any higher. It's thick on the side, but that is top side. This is where the muffin top applies to a nail. I probably, I'm sure I have a muffle top, muffin top if I wear some of my pants too tight, but I just get rid of them. I just get fat pants now. <laughs> it's much better, much more comfortable. So this muffin top here, it looks good when you look at it this way. But when you look at it this way, you can see the bottom of your shape is happy. You need now to take off the top side. The top side has got to go because it reveals underneath. Now, it doesn't apply, the muffin top doesn't apply as much to this shape as it does square. <laughs> Actually, the muffin top does apply to this when you zoom into it. So every time you make a nail shorter, if the nail was built properly the first time round, it's going to become thicker as you make it shorter. But when you make it shorter, we don't want it that thick anymore because it doesn't need to be because it's shorter, right? It's all stress and structure. But now you can see this is quite a bit thicker. We don't want that that thick. That's ugly. So what we do want to do is this is the muffin top. The bottom part is actually accurate. That's where we want it to be. But it's bulging with some thickness in here. We need to take that apart. We need to take that right down. And you can see how, see how the white's coming away? All the white and the nude polish is all being filed away. That's perfect because I am now making it the nice slender, oh, that looks so, so nice. Right on, that looks great, look at that. See that? You can see where all the nail polish, the gel polish was removed, that's how thick it was. And you can see this side is just thick and bulky. So I'm gonna do the same with that guy. And just relieve it of all that thickness, just bulking that nail right up. I call it top side fat, which is really, a muffin top. It's just too tight on the bottom and then that may be the shape that you want and then it explodes on the top and all the product is hanging over. So you, you're you filing and filing. You know it's right because your file is on the right angle and you're keeping it as square as you can. Yet you look down at it and it still looks fat. So you are making that right. But unfortunately, the product over top, because of the thickness of it, when you built it, it needs to come down. But once you tack that file on the top side, you will bring that fatness right down and you'll reveal the bottom of your muffin top and you'll be very happy because that is the shape that you want. Okay, so it looks like we got ourselves a nice shorter almond. All we did was take that top stuff down. Okay, now let's look at this. You can see all the nude polish still there. See that? Right? We left all the nude polish in the center because all that had to come off is the sides. The center is the structure we want to keep, so it keeps the strength. But we took the sides down to get some delicateness, but it's still thick enough where it needs to be. That looks great. That's what we want to do. Okay, so we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to turn a square, a long square, into an almond. It's basically the same process, remembering your center point. I can't express that enough. It's really, really important. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to draw right from the beginning there. Make sure you get right in the center. And you can just draw that, either imaginary or, you know, real. <laughs> Whatever makes it easier for you, right? So I just gave it a little nip to keep that white on there. So let's say they want a longer uh, almond or even going into a stiletto. It just means you're taking off a lot more of the side. But be careful with that because you still need that fatness in there. So 
Again, see the tip? I'm not going to take this off because let's say they don't want to shorten. They're just changing their square or coffin into an almond. Okay, we just really want to take off that corner. And we want to find that almond point. See how I'm filing up to that little white line? I'm not going to file that white line off at all. And then you start from your free edge. Where do you want it to be, right? you got to take it right from the free edge. And that's when your sort of artistic style comes in of how much you're going to almond it. Is it going to be kind of a fatter almond or is it going to be more slender almond? And that's a style you'll just develop. That'll be your style. But this is where if you don't mark that center point in your mind or even physically on the nail, once you go past it, then you have to go shorter because you've now removed the end and you have to have a new end. That's why it's really important to know where you're going. And if you don't mark it, that's where I mean how um, a coffin or any of these kinds of shapes can go real sideways or sideways real fast if you don't sort of find your center point. Okay, you can see how we've taken that all the way. Now I just have to do that on that side. It's a little easier for me to do it if I, I can't do it the other way. So I'm just gonna flip this over and I'm gonna try to take that corner away. And again, never removing that little line. I gotta keep that there. So now you can look at it though, look at it from an aerial point of view, that one angle. Okay, so that's getting there. Of course, we need to tweak. That's what you're always doing. You're always tweak, tweak, tweak. But if you notice, you turn it sideways. Look at that thickness there. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You want to take that out. And the other side is really drooping over. See that? Yuck. I'm going to break my finger. Sorry, I have to hold it this way or I just can't. So I took that droop out completely. It's too hard to really, the angle is too tough. Okay, so I'll go underneath and take that out. But now I've got the problem that it's still too heavy on the top. Because when you're doing an almond specifically, if you look down the barrel this way directly, it's coming at you at a point. I called it the dolphin nose at one point because you're you're bringing it into a fine, nice little point, right? So right now it's thick and bulky because it was a completely different shape. So you need to taper those sides in as well. And that's where we come up with that muffin top I was talking about. I'm going to show you right here. You can see the gel polish being the nude, right? You'll be able to see the file right when I hit it. See how it's coming off there? That's where I'm hitting it. That is the fat part. That is the thick part, just like the other nail we just did. And that is actually looking really good. This didn't need that much because actually when I built this nail, it was actually quite thin. So I'm just filing that side too. Look at that. So look at, see how the very, very center, I've actually really tried very hard not to touch that very center. And look at my white dot is still there, keeping the integrity of that very, very end. I don't want to change that at all because like I say, once you change that, you have to go shorter and then you got to take off the sides again. You got to shave the whole thing down. You got to reshape it entirely, even if you take off a little bit of the end, because the focal point is the very end, especially in an almond shape. That tip end is extremely important. Okay. So now what if somebody wants a really, really short almond? Well, it, I, what does somebody call it? I think it was Elizabeth from the Nail Hub called it the kitten heel. I think that's what she called it. Anyway, somebody said that. I thought it was really cute. But yeah, that's basically what it is. It's just a tiny little, like a cat dung uh, brush. It just goes into a real quick little almond. I always think it's, 
when somebody mentioned it, they want a stiletto, but they want it super long or super short. I always think that's weird because you need the length, but you got to figure out a way to work it out. So in this case, I would take down this whole nail quite a bit. I would just file the length right off because they're looking for a shorter um, almond or shorter stiletto. They're almost the same, almond and stilettos are almost the same, but they can look very different. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this length right down because the client says, hey, I want a short almond. Okay, so that still looks like a bigger nail just because it's got so much nail estate on there, right? Okay, so they want a short almond. So you're faced with the same thing. You want to draw a line here and draw a line there, making sure that you got your center point and we're going to take away the corners, okay? And don't forget the underside. Now this is interesting. This nail was very long and I'm trying to make it short, but look how thick it has become. Look how thick that is, it's dreadful. Especially when you want a petite little almond at the end of that nail. You don't need all that structure. We needed it when it was longer, but we don't need it anymore. So you gotta resize the whole thing. It's like a jacket that you want smaller. You don't just shorten the sleeves, you gotta reduce everything. The length, you gotta take it in the waist. The whole thing comes in if you want the whole thing smaller. Okay, so we're trying to just determine that almond shape to the center of the nail. getting there, but I want to make it thinner because it's a little easier to work with as well. But you want it to they got the muffin top thing going on. So we need to reduce those top sides to bring that down to a dainty almond nail. So again, see the nude polish, the part that I'm finding, you can see it coming off. That's the concentration. That's the area that I'm concentrating on to get rid of thickness to make this look like a nice dainty almond. And I'm gonna do the same for the opposite side. And there'll be a lot more work because it was a lot longer, a lot thicker, and it had a lot more stress. A lot more nail going on because it was quite a bit longer. That's looking really cute. And you can see the polish is all down the center. We just took away the sides to create those almond shapes. All of them ended up to be the same kind of pattern. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. That's pretty good. And then when I finish with my coarse file, I can grab the medium and you can actually even go right to the fine if you want, but I will take the medium and I will just fine tune and smooth out the edges and then go right down to the fine and then just smooth them out so that if the client in the old days, we used to say, or my analogy was, if a client was running her hands through a pair of pantyhose, would the nails get caught? Or if you touched some fine fabric, would it get caught and ruin the fabric? That's always what I was thinking before the client left the chair, to make those nails nice and smooth, okay? So I've always got that in my mind Nobody wears pantyhose anymore, but I've always got that in my mind to have it nice and smooth. So a fine file is really nice to go around and do that. So I'm going to file all these off and I will put the color polish on nude again so you can see and I'll show you, give you a nice little 3D to show you how thin everything is. So let's check that out. Hydrate with a nice oil. Oh my goodness, I can't 
pretend not having it. When I see the almond shape, my knees buckle. I'll tell you something. When I first got into nails and I learned of the square shape that everybody was doing 33 years ago, I honestly didn't like it. I was like, hmm. But I started doing it and I fell in love with it. Then when speed up to just a few years back, almond, the pointy stilettos came into effect and I didn't like it. <laughs> and the more I've done, I fell in love with it. Now, I don't ever want to go back to the square. I love the almond shape. I love creating the square because it's so artistic and I'd like to get it super, super sharp. But the almond right now I'm in love with, look how pretty that is. I absolutely, and these are three different lengths. It's a shorter one, sort of a mid length and a longer one. I do have long nail beds. Don't be fooled by that. The nail bed, the, the structure of the nail bed is long, right? So if you just had a shorter one and you had this length on there, that would be a long nail to you. But for me, it's not very long because my nail bed is quite long. But those are really pretty. I really like them. I miss me almond. I think I want to make them all go almond. I miss them. Anyway, it's nice to have matching. I've got nat matching hands. Nice. Okay, so I do want to tell you what a video I created. French glitter in the almond shape. I did it years ago, but it's a beautiful video and beautiful glitter and sparkles. If you like that, check them out.